Hey, David Rathoff here. Uh, I've got another Elixir video. Today I'm going to be talking about code coverage. Uh, so on any project you're working on, you'll want to make sure that you're um, testing your code as you go. And um, it's also a really good idea to um, know kind of, you know, what your code coverage is, where you might be lacking in certain areas, um, and be able to tell, for example, um, when, when you're working in, say, like a team setting, that your coverage isn't falling over time or isn't like uh, below a certain threshold in a different area. And you may even want to, um, for example, like prevent um, uh, your software from building uh, under certain conditions, like if the test coverage is too low or if there's no coverage on a file. Um, so anyway, uh, it's really good to have a tool to be able to um, just handle that stuff automatically. And uh, I think the standard tool, uh, I think there's a couple competing ones, but um, as far as I can tell, the one that's used the most in Elixir is uh, EX Coveralls. And I'm just gonna be showing you what that looks like real quick. Um, the, the documentation on it's really good and uh, it has a lot of examples for like integrating with um, CI tools like Travis or Circle or Semaphore. Um, so yeah, I would recommend, uh, if you have questions about that, just uh, checking out the uh, the docs. Uh, they're pretty comprehensive. Um, but yeah, what I wanted to show you is what you'll end up with. So um, if you use, if you include it in your project, uh, which I'll show you how to do here, um, all you really need to do is in your mix.exs file under your dependency, your depths definition here, um, You'll just want to add it in, and what I've done is uh, I keep a separate kind of little section down here that's dedicated to testing, and you only need to include it in a um, test environment, so I just uh, set it to only include for test, and then after you do that, you'll just want to make sure you go out and get your dependencies, um, so you would want to do like a mix depths.get, and that would pull it down, uh, and you'd be... Um, ready to go and then if you want to actually run it I'll come over here and um, this is just kind of the standard way to run it from uh, the command line and get output in the command line so let's just do that real quick let's see what we get and here you can see it generates this report here so one thing you'll see is it's um, uh, let's see it yeah it's basically looking at all these different files to see how many lines there are, um, how many are relevant for testing, how many were missed. Um, and then right now it's saying my coverage is like 41%. I think that's actually probably low because there's a bunch of stuff in here, like all this stuff under web I'm not really using. It doesn't need to be there. That's not test. You can see it's not tested very well. Um, oh, and then over here on the left, it gives you like a a percentage so you can get a rough idea quickly of uh, what kind of percentage coverage you have on those um, yeah your target is another question that's like kind of up for debate but I think um, you know roughly like 80 to 90 percent is kind of a decent target uh, if you shoot for a hundred percent there's some problems you can run into with that um, one is you can accidentally uh, be testing uh, like third-party code which you don't really want to do like that stuff should be tested on its own so if you're um, you know bringing in other tools that you use in your code you don't need to you shouldn't need to test to make sure they're doing uh, what they say they're gonna do um, and then the other problem you can run it into is kind of over testing so you can hit, have um, code that's getting hit by tests in a bunch of different areas. And if that code changes, uh, you potentially need to change a whole bunch of tests instead of just like one or two tests that are really focused on that specific um, part of the code. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is a great tool just for quickly kind of seeing where you are and with your test coverage. You can also run it um, to generate like an HTML report. And I'll show you the command for that here. So it looks pretty similar. You just add .html onto the end. And when it's done, it's going to um, spit out a report into a, uh, I think it's a cover directory. Let's see. Yeah, cover. So um, it'll spit all the files there. I've already got one up that uh, I generated earlier that I can show you. 
so here you can see on the right, it's got a list of all the files and then kind of the percentage of coverage. Um, the way the highlighting in this reads is still a little confusing to me, so I'm not sure exactly how they're determining what's relevant and what's not relevant. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, and you can just quickly jump if you wanted to go see like what code, uh, uh, what these files look like in this report. So. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's just nice to have a uh, version like this as well. Um, sometimes that's a little bit easier to dig into. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty quick video. I just wanted to cover uh, this test coverage tool. Um, trying to hit, again, all the uh, kind of basic tools you would use when you're working on an Elixir app. Um, so I'll be doing a couple more of these videos. Um, but yeah, if you were uh, if you have anything that's uh, particular you want to hear about, let me know in the comments. Um, if you found this interesting, uh, hit subscribe and turn on notifications. Uh, also, uh, if you have a second, hit the like button if you liked it. Uh, it helps, um, it helps uh, the video show up more in the YouTube searches and also helps me know, uh, you know what people are interested in. So yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.